Welcome to our lecture online. The 19th and final question in the physics portion of the JE Advanced Test in 2021 deals with radiative cooling. And so let's read the problem and see if we can figure out the answer. A small object is placed at the center of a large evacuated hollow spherical container. Assume that the container is maintained at 0 Kelvin. At time t equals 0, the temperature of the object is 200 K. The temperature of the object becomes 100 K at t equals t1 and 50 K at t equals t2. Assume the object and the container to be ideal black bodies. The heat capacity of the object does not depend on the temperature. The ratio t2 over t1 is, and that is what we're trying to find, the ratio of the time that it takes to go from 200 to 100 and the time that it takes from 200 down to 50 K. So how do we even start a problem like that? Well, it turns out there's two equations we should know. The first equation is that the amount of heat per unit time that is radiated from an object into a, a, a spherical shaped object that's kept at zero Kelvin, that's going to be equal to the emissivity times sigma times the surface area times temperature to the fourth power. Now notice that these three here are constants and T is the variable that's going to change. The other thing that we should know is that the amount of heat contained in an object is equal to mc uh, times the temperature. And so that means that dq dt is going to be equal to mc times dt, dt, like this. Hmm. Now, the mass of an object, well, we the mass of an object, of course, we know that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, but, and that means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, but none of that really matters because, again, we can say that this is simply a constant. So that's a constant, that's a constant. Now you can see why I made mention of that, because it makes the problem a little bit faster and easier. First of all, we're going to replace dq dt by mc dt dt. So we have mc d temperature d time is equal to e sigma a t to the fourth power. Then if we divide both sides by mc, we realize that this portion right here is simply a constant. So we can say that dt over dt is equal to some constant, let's call it c1, times t to the fourth power. And that means that we can now say that dt over t to the fourth power is equal to some constant times dt. And then we can write this as uh, t to the negative 4 dt is equal to c sub 1 dt because now we can integrate both sides. And so the first time we're going to go from time equals 0 to time equals t1. And this here we're going to integrate from starting at 200 Kelvin down to 100 Kelvin. And so when we do that, we get t to the negative 3 over negative 3. Uh, that looks terrible. Let me try that again. There we go. Well, let me come up here. I have a little bit more room. So coming up here, continuing here, so end up with t to the negative 3 over negative 3, evaluated from 200 to 100, is equal to c1t evaluated from 0 to t1. Notice the negative 3 times c1, that's a constant, so we can get rid of that. So we can call this uh, t, t to the negative 3, which is 1 over t cubed, evaluated from 200 to 100, is equal to some other constant times t1 when we plug in the limits over there. And then over here, what we have is we can plug in the upper limit, so we have 1 over 100 cubed minus 1 over 200 cubed. And so this is, uh, let's see here, 200 cubed is going to be 8 times 100 cubed. So if we multiply this times 8 and multiply this times 8, we now have 8 minus 1, or we have 7 over 200 cubed, which is 8 with 6 zeros times 10 to the 6th. And that would then be equal to some constant times T1. So now we have some relationship between T1 and what the, the temperature. Okay, so we're going to do this again now the second time, but now we're going to change the limits. Now we're going to go from 200 to 50, and that will give us a ratio of the time. 
So the whole process will be exactly the same, but now our integral will look as follows. We now will have 1 over t cubed evaluator from 200 uh, to 50, and that will still be equal to some constant, let's call it c, well, it'll be the same constant, c2 times t2. And here, on this side, we'll get 1 over 50 cubed um, minus 1 over 200 cubed, and that will be c2 times t. Hmm. Now, 200 cubed and 50 cubed, what's the difference? Well, 200 is 4 times 50, and if we cube, cube that, we get 64. So that means we get 64 minus 1 over 200 cubed, because that way I put over a common denominator, and that equals c2 times t2, right? So now we're dealing with t2 here. And so that gives us 63 over 200 cubed equals c2 times t2. And now we can find the ratio between t2 over t1. That is going to be equal to 63 over 200 cubed divided by uh, 7 over uh, 200 cubed. Uh, let's see here. Is that true? Yeah. Two, uh, ah, that's where I went wrong. This should be 200 cubed. Uh, let's just write it like this so it's less confusing. 200 cubed because I made the common denominator to be 200 cubed. So this is 200 cubed. And so this is going to be 63 over 7, which is equal to 9. So the ratio of the time that it takes to go from 200 to 50 versus the time that it, goes, it takes from 200 to 100 Kelvin is 9 to 1. And that is the number we're looking for over here. Wow. You only get three minutes to read the problem, gather your thoughts, try to figure out how to do it, and then come out with a solution. You can see that you'd be hard pressed to do that in three minutes. So first of all, we need to know this equation right here. And we remember this equation, we turn that into a differential, and then we replace dq dt by mc dt dt, make the problem a lot easier by just calling this whole thing a constant. So you end up with dt over t to the fourth equals some constant times d time, and then you integrate both sides. So when you integrate t to the minus 4 dt, you get t to the minus 3 over negative 3. The constant will be lopped up in this one to make it to a different constant. So 1 over t cubed from 200 to 100, and then you do it again, 1 over t cubed from 200 to 50, and you can see that ratio ends up being 63 over 7 or a 9. Yes, you'd have to work very fast to get this one done in three minutes or less. And that that's the challenge of the JE advanced tests in physics.